Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I just finished watching the most recent episode of The Walking Dead. Periodically I'll talk about The Walking Dead and try to extract some bits of inspiration to create some talking points that we can try to better understand what things might be like in a world like that. Obviously the plausibility of that world is very low considering uh, the zombie thing. But it really is just an analogy for without rule of law situations. So quick spoiler alert, I'll try not to give too much details. Nothing really too significant happened in this episode that uh, you'd be upset if you if you knew what the outcome was. So anyways, Negan and Rick are fighting. They're the main protagonist and antagonist. Negan plays the antagonist. But this is the question I have for people. And it's that in a world like that, where there is no rule of law, the question at some point might come, can you actually be a fair-minded leader who doesn't use punitive measures in order to discipline the population? Negan says something in this episode about how he saves people. And as many of you know, his group is called the Saviors. He's kind of the cult leader of this group. Now, he claims that he saves people even though his methods are fairly harsh. Of course, he executes people. He'll uh, maim people for life if they're disobedient. And according to him, he you see his philosophy starting to develop in this episode, really. Because as much as he is a, a evil tyrant of sorts, uh, you also see that he's quite level-headed and that he does have some empathy and some sympathy uh, especially when uh, Rick Grimes' son Carl passes on. He displays some empathy. He talks about how, yes, the kid was the future and yada yada yada. And for a moment, uh, he starts to actually seem more compassionate than one of his lieutenants, who currently is being quite defiant and wanting to take a more ruthless approach than Negan to dealing with people. Negan wants to keep people around as assets and extort them for their labor and production of resources. But this other guy just wants to kill them all because he, th he feels that it's not worth the hassle, that people are too resistant, that they're going to rise up. So the question is then, in a world like that where there's no rule of law and you have people like that, like that lieutenant who just really don't care about life too much is there a certain logic to being Negan is it necessary at least in this stage of the game to be that ruthless with people and to be that exhibitionist with your executions in order to scare people into submission because remember you're talking about without rule of law you're talking about guys who probably would have been behind bars if the grid were up and they have their freedom and you have to somehow keep all these people in line and keep them cooperative. Negan also makes a point to Rick about the net loss of life in that since Rick has come along, uh, basically all of Ezekiel's group has pretty much passed on. A large amount of the saviors, a large amount of Rick's group. So hundreds of people have died and disrupted this system that Negan had, which although it was ruthless and people were exploited and slaves and indentured and servitude into him, they still lived. Even though they were extorted and unhappy with the situation, they at least survived. So it, it begs the question, is there a room for a benevolent dictator in a collapse scenario? And in light of the volatility of that post-collapse world, is it actually a necessary phase of SHTF that you need benevolent dictatorship? Eventually, of course, all dictators fall to some sort of revolution. But is it necessary for the first phase of something like that to really get a handle on things and then it will gradually evolve into something more democratic in which the people have more liberties? Or do people's liberties need to be restricted in the earliest phases of uh, the chaos of a post-collapse environment where there is no prison and judicial system and the only way to get compliance from people is to really scare the crap out of them into submitting? 
I think it's a, a notable question because consider this. If there ever was a large scale grid down scenario where uh, the rule of law just collapsed entirely, obviously if there's communities developing, there's going to have to be methods in which you deal with social deviancy. You can't expect compliance from people because people are going to be breaking the law. People are going to do very bad things. And how do you deal with that? I think the, the main form of dealing with it is probably going to be capital punishment of some sort. So what's commonly known as capital punishment, then it's just going to be considered execution. But there's going to be something to be said for these swift, harsh punishments when resources aren't going to be there to house people in a holding cell. Maybe in the later phases, once some stability is gained, you have enough resources and manpower to afford to some luxury like that. But for that period of time, especially when you're battling groups outside of your own, trying to keep your own in check, uh, there's going to probably have to be some harsh methods implemented, and it's going to take a pretty logical-minded person to effectively do that without doing it for your own personal gain. Now, this enters the next question is, uh, obviously, we know this is a fictional story, and these people have no uh, vitality that we don't give them. But... Do you think that Negan's motives are for himself? Do you think that there's a, that he's doing it for his own gain? Or do you think he's doing it? Because I'm starting to get uh, a sense almost he's hinting to Rick that he only does this because he has to do it in order to keep people from fighting with one another. And you get the sense that he doesn't necessarily want to do it, but he has to do it. But then you think about some of the boundaries he's crossed like with all the women that he has as his wives and that he's basically taken from the other guys there. Uh, do you think that that's just a power play move on his behalf, that he's just doing that in order because he needs to do that? Or do you think that that's purely motivated out of self-interest? So what do you guys think of this? Because in any post-collapse society, there's going to be people who step up to the plate and start barking orders at you and what boundaries would they have to cross for you to say enough is enough and want to overthrow them what sort of powers would you allow them to be the administrators and arbiters of these punitive and social control tactics how far is too far and you really need to think this through because it's not as simple as you think even if one of these so-called tyrants is doing these public capital punishments it seems very harsh but you have to ask yourself though is that worse than the chaos that might ensue if there was no order at all consider this it's very much like a group of riot police who are entering a riot zone which is uh, off the wall and everybody's just freaking out and throwing things and smashing windows and going crazy and breaking the law and being very deviant you don't get a handle on that sort of thing with a democratic process and really that's a, a microcosm what of what shtf would be and trying to get all of those people under control instantly would probably take some swift and decisive punitive measures anyways i've rambled on long enough let me know what you think thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe canadian prepper out